today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something I've never tried before. It's a uh, annealing 3D printed PLA um, parts and uh, making them more uh, durable, I guess. And and what I did here is I have a, a transducer. Um, I guess it's just a little bracket that holds the wire on my Hummingbird transducer. And I can't seem to find this part individually, so I 3D printed one. And it's fairly weak. It, the layer lines don't really give it enough strength the way I want it. So I figured I'd try this method here um, with salt annealing. So what I did here to start this process was I actually took just regular table salt and I put it in my Cuisinart um, coffee grinder. And what I got is a powdery, really powdery, fine salt out of that. So what I'm going to do, and I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it, is I'm going to take this part, I'm going to put it on a, in a metal, this happens to be stainless steel, you could use aluminum or whatever, but um, I'm going to put a part, this part in there, and then I'm going to put the salt in there as well. So actually I'm going to put a little salt on the bottom, just so that the part has some distance from the bottom of the, the metal. And I'm going to fill this up with salt. Get that part in there real, real deep. Um, what I want to do is kind of hold it down, tap it a little bit. Now, I'm going to take some aluminum foil. And since I don't really want to heat up my entire oven and do this for a while, I thought, well, what the heck, I have an air fryer here. So the air fryer has a blower in it and it blows the air around. No, I didn't want that salt flying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up with foil pretty tightly. Um, and I'm actually going to set it in the air fryer here. I'm going to get it started. Set the temperature up to 400. And I'm going to put it in there for, I don't know, 35 minutes. We'll try that. Maybe 40. Just. And I'm going to hit start. And we'll come back in a bit and uh, show you the results. So I have the new printed part here. Um, I'm just going to redo the salt application here, but this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to put the part in um, in this direction here that makes sure that this dome here fills up with salt and everything builds up um, nicely without having any gaps in the salt. I did make a, a couple iterations here um, off camera so you don't have to go through all the failures, but uh, basically if you don't get every single part covered in every part of this thing covered in salt you're going to have voids and that PLA is just going to flow right into there so this way if I change the orientation of the part it'll it'll not be able to really have voids at all so um, just some simple things to make sure you don't have voids tap it right or vibrate if you got some kind of device that can vibrate like an oscillating tool would be a good one just put that on the side of your counter or something get this to pack down real tightly around it and it seems to pack pretty good by just tapping it on the counter but if you had larger parts or, or parts with larger voids you may want to get a little more aggressive with how much uh vibration you want to use to to really make sure that the the salt kind of makes its way into all of the the portions of the part so here we are again we'll uh Put this in the air fryer again at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 to 50 minutes. So here's the final product here. You can see the three legs sticking out there. And this is a good one for sure. Tipping it over was the key. We'll uh, 
up, rinse it off with a little bit of water, and I'll be right back. And here's the completed part. It's all finished. Looks good, really strong. Everything, all the features are still in it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a good way of making your 3D prints a lot stronger. Best of luck, thank you. So I'm gonna show you a little comparison of the strength of these. Here's a piece that I had a defect on it so the back leg broke on this one, but uh, this is a non-annealed part and I'll, I'll pull it a little bit and you can just see it snaps right off. Like somewhere in here, one of these lines um, where the print builds, it, it's weaker than all the other ones. It's, it, it's very fragile. Um, you can pretty much do that with any of these. They just, they just break right off. And that's why I kind of thought about using this process because they're just too weak. This one here is the one that I just, just made here. It had the dome top because I didn't pack the salt tight enough. But the sides give you the idea of what's going on here. I mean, these are significantly stronger. I mean, I'm literally pulling hard on this and it, it takes a lot of force. It's well beyond the force. I know it's hard to tell on the on the, the video here, but it's way, way stronger. Like, in, and there's a lot more give, bend before it actually breaks. And even here, you can see I'm pulling it and then the, the, the plastic actually stretches before it breaks. So the layers here are significantly stronger and uh, much, much better. So even there, I hit it. I pulled it so hard that I hit my tripod pretty hard. So again, works works significantly better than just your standard print. So if you need extra strength, annealing is a pretty good option. I'll uh, put a link to a Thingiverse file for anyone that might need this part. Um, it's free, it'll be out there. And uh, if you happen to need a hummingbird transducer clip, it'll be there for you to make on your own. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thank you.